The big challenge with most companies in the world today. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Future in 5. My name is Jacob Morgan. This is where I share my thoughts, ideas, and commentary on the future of work in five minutes or less. Really quick before we get into this week's topic, I want to give a big thanks to the folks over at Work Market for making this episode of The Future in 5 possible. Work Market's a vendor in the freelance management system space. They help organizations and freelancers find and connect with each other. So if you're an organization looking to tap into freelancers or a freelancer looking to get more gigs, uh, you might want to check out workmarket.com. So this week's topic is uh, what is the number one or the, the biggest challenge that most organizations are faced with? Now, this is actually something that uh, Gary Hamill has talked about quite a bit. And it, it's kind of a fascinating paradox, I think, because the, the big challenge is that organizations are trying to adapt, right? They're thinking about the future. They're thinking, how do we be more nimble, adaptable, agile? How do we take all these things that are coming our way figure out what to do with it, make some sort of sense out of it, take some sort of action, and make sure that we survive and thrive. But the challenge is that companies are just not structured in a way to be able to do that. I mean, our companies are structured and modeled after the military. We were built like this. And when you are built like that, it's very hard to adapt and thrive and succeed and, and, and figure out how to make sense of all of these things. And so that's kind of the paradox is how do we become more nimble and think about and prepare for the future of work? But at the same time, we can't really do that because our companies were not built in that way. This is why we're seeing so many discussions and conversations happening now around changing the very uh, basics of what it means to be an organization, of what it means to structure a company. Do we need a hierarchy? Do we need to have four walls that we sit in? What kind of technology should employees use? We're going back to the very, very basics of what does it mean to be an organization and what does it mean to be a company? I think that for companies that are trying to prepare and think about how the workplace is changing, before even getting to that conversation, we first have to start with how do we change our company around? How do we think about the very basics of what is an employee, a manager, and what is our company? And then create that and redefine it in a way that allows the company to think about what's coming forward, that allows the company to think about and prepare for what the workplace is going to bring. And there are a few good examples of companies that have done this. Uh, Cisco is a great organization that has done this. They're a member of uh, my future of work community that I help run. Uh, they do a fantastic job of this with uh, empowering their employees. They're starting to think about possibly letting employees have more than one job. Uh, LinkedIn, another great example. They're implementing new programs that are designed to focus on employee experiences instead of on long-term careers and projects. Uh, Whirlpool, a great example. They implemented programs that allow any employee to contribute ideas for products and services. They uh, implemented technologies to connect their entire organization. They removed that bureaucratic and hierarchical layer and tried to put everybody on kind of the, the same leadership plane. So there are a lot of examples of what organizations are starting to do and what they're starting to think about. But the common thread that I'm starting to see is that we start with structure. We start with the very basics of what it means to be an employee, what it means to be a manager, and what it means to be an organization. So. When you think about the future of work, the very first step is to answer those questions. Once you have those questions answered, and once you figure out what you need to look like, then you can start to actually think about what are the things that are coming our way and what should we be doing about it. But if your company isn't in the position to, uh, to adapt structurally and culturally and physically, then it doesn't matter what you see coming your way because you're kind of going to be a deer in headlights. So think about the basics, then think about what's coming your way. I think that is the best approach. It's what I'm seeing a lot of organizations do. Curious to hear what you think, leave me a comment below. If you want to get access to more episodes of these videos and podcasts and articles and the Future of Work show, 
or actually go inside of companies to interview their executives and tour their offices, then you can visit thefutureorganization.com or subscribe to the YouTube channel for more of these videos. You can also send me an email, jacob at thefutureorganization.com for topic suggestions or if you want to sponsor an episode yourself. And uh, what else? Ah, Twitter. You can connect with me on Twitter at Jacob M. I will see you next time on an episode of The Future in 5. Hey, are you interested in the future of work? If so, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get all the latest content on the future of work and stay up to date on all the latest trends and happenings. Not to mention, you will make me very, very happy. Make sure to subscribe.